Welcome back to Hoop Slams for the show that floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. My name is Mark Griffin, a.k.a. Montreal Mark. I'm joined by my partner in time, Phil Boileau, Sporting Phil, and a special guest, Julian McKenzie. Julian, the intern from CGLO Montreal, the starting rotation, Sportsnet, and a bunch of other things. He's a dabbler just like us. Uh, we're going to talk a, bun- a bevy of basketball and a bit of Muhammad Ali as well. Let's dive in. We're talking NBA Finals, and we're going to do a spotlight on a few players shining on the greatest stage in June. Sean Livingston has had one of the strangest career arcs I've ever seen in a professional athlete on this planet. He was a high school phenom, went straight to uh, the NBA, just like LeBron James did, drafted number four by the uh, LA Clippers in, I believe, 2004, and then... All heck broke loose. He shattered his patella. Uh, one of the most gruesome sports injuries you'll ever see. I refuse to look at it, by the way. Uh, Phil, what do you think about this guy's career? I mean, he was waived by basically every team in the league for a few years. Yeah, I mean, well, it, uh, for anyone who did see that injury, you would kind of understand. Like, you don't look at an injury like that and you're like, yeah, you're going to play basketball again. Although, look, look, uh, look what happened to Paul George last year. Everyone maybe thought the same thing when that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean Livingston, it, it's interesting. He comes in, he's supposed to be this next big point guard. You know, mm-hmm. everyone's talking LeBron James. Le- LeBron James is more of a forward. I think, I think that was a failed experiment of point guard. But Sean Livingston was a point guard, is a point guard. And he was just on this upward ascension. Like, yeah, he couldn't shoot, but he could do everything else really well. At 6'7", he could defend the point guard position. And we're seeing it now on an elite level, could set guys up, had great hands, had great vision, had great poise. He never played out of control, and that was one thing I really liked about him. Mm-hmm. And he could see over the top, he could shoot over the top. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a different thing, and, it, and it's kind of a gut check, right? Like, he is becoming relevant at the age of, like, 28, uh, c- counting last year. So he's kind of like li- like a weird version of Steve Nash, you know, like his career's mm-hmm. uh, taken off when most people's careers are, are peaking, right? Um, so he's a great player, I think, to, to have on a championship team. And and it's another kind of like Penny Hardaway story. It's like, what if we had gotten to see him from, you know, mm-hmm. 21 to 27? Mm-hmm. He's got a bit of a Grant Hill to him, by the way, kind of having that later stage glory years. Uh, Julian, so he played for the Miami Heat, yes. Oklahoma City Thunder. He played in the D-League, Wizards, Bobcats, uh, Bucks, Wizards again, Nets. What do you remember during this era? <laughs> <laughs> I was a really young kid. I'm like a lot younger than both of you guys. I don't remember yeah. the, but from that era, of course. Uh, that being said, uh, I have I have seen the video where uh, he hurt his patella, and uh, that is extremely gruesome. Actually, it's funny after that game one, uh, seeing the you know he got as many points as, as Curry and Thompson combined. I just kind of mm. sat back and looked and said, "This is a guy who who had one of the more gruesome injuries ever." And I remember like pulling up the video. Uh, up on YouTube, the video on YouTube is so grainy and, and, and horrible pixelation. It's awful. You could barely make out like, you know, oh, wow, that's Livingston. You can only tell it's him when you see him down on the ground hurting himself. Uh, mm-hmm. It was pretty much shot with a potato. Uh, yeah, no, I don't remember much from that era because I'm dumb too young. But the fact that, that he's he's been able to thrive in the situation that he's in, I mean, you can't think of a more perfect situation for Sean Livingston getting the backup Steph Curry. And, and being able to contribute off the bench whenever they throw him into their rotation, he's always a, a really solid contributor for Golden State. So this is really a great situation for him. And if Cleveland's not able to find a way to you know neutralize that bench, Livingston could be a huge X factor going forward. Yeah, I mean, Golden State seems to be a team that's full of guys teams didn't believe in. And it just kind of they, – they, they gelled well together. Phil – what are what are the few of the things that make him stand out now these last two years uh, in Golden State these championship runs? I mean, I, I I think it's two things. I think one, his elite defense, the point guard position. Like mm-hmm. we see this again and again and again. He may not be quite as fast as Russell Westbrook, but when you're six seven with that wingspan, you can be a step slower and still be in front of him and still cause major havoc. But number two, he brought the post up game back. I mean, look, <laughs> it, like yeah. even compared to big guys, he's one of the few guys that legitimately uses post up moves, going over shoulders, hook shots in his regular repertoire. I mean, we saw him dropping jump shots last game which for me this is why i don't see this continuing so much for him like i think his jump shots a little spotty his his post-up game is where it's at drawing fouls and just abusing guys like Kyrie irving with a three four inch advantage in the post 
So I would say the post-up game, which is a la Andre Miller, just way bigger doing it, and his mm-hmm. defensive uh, just presence. Uh, Julian, as you mentioned, he, he was he had a podium game in game one of the NBA Finals here in 2016 with 20 points, career playoff high. Does he have any chance in heck of being the MVP of the NBA Finals? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if – if Steph Curry you know, putting up 11 points throughout every game of this series, maybe I don't see that happening. I mean, <laughs> you know, with, with the shooters, you know, you have your off games here and there. Just the fact that they were able to thrive and, uh, you know, for the rest of the players to come up and play as well as they did, that's outstanding. Uh, but just like a lot, this is almost what happened last year, right? This was a situation where mm-hmm. it took them a while for them to, to start playing. And eventually when Steph Curry woke up, they took over the series. Andre won the mm-hmm. finals MVP that year. Is he going to win again this year? Mm-hmm. That's another story. Uh, I mean, if Sean Livingston, you know, he, he hits his points here and there, maybe he has a chance. Uh, I wouldn't put my money on it. <laughs> yeah. As <laughs> far as I'm MVP. concerned, yeah, I know. As far as I'm concerned, it's all gravy for this guy. His entire career up to this point is gravy because no one expected him to come back. It's just wonderful to see. 